and uh, it's a very pleasant place to walk but uh, let's go on and see what we can find it's the first time we've been here so uh, we're going to find out a little bit about it as you do and hopefully uh, we'll use that to help us along in our prayers stations in the cross of the cross in the place that's locally known as Calvary or Calvary Hill and uh, as we come along here we'll go and visit each station in turn. So at the start, uh, we found this um, small shrine that's uh, at the start of the uh, journey through the uh, uh, Stations of the Cross, and in front of me. Uh, let's have a look at the station, shall we? Okay, so here they are, and um, we're going to go and uh, begin to work through the stations in turn now. So, here we are at the first station of the cross, Jesus is condemned to death. And uh, if you look at it, you can see that uh, in the background is Pontius Pilate washing his hands uh, as he says, I, I want no part of this. Um, and there's Jesus himself with the soldiers grabbing hold of him and manhandling him. And, you know, sometimes we can feel very alone ourselves. We can feel that we've been abandoned, that we've been misunderstood, that people uh, don't want to know. But Jesus has been there for us. Heavenly Father, we pray that you will be with us in those times when we feel misjudged, when we feel people have accused us wrongly of things, as you understand that, Lord. And Heavenly Father, as we walk these stations of the cross, help us to get drawn into your life and to follow more closely your way. Amen.
And so here we are at the second station. Jesus is loaded with the cross. Carrying the cross is never easy. A couple of weeks ago in our worship we thought about what it meant to carry our own crosses. And here we find that the cross here is something that Jesus had both forced upon him, but also he took voluntarily. Those two things go side by side. And you can see the soldiers here, there, looking at him with disdain, like he had just crawled out from under a stone or something like that. He's there, and at the moment, he's strong and ready to go ahead with this. He's resolute lies before him. Heavenly Father, when you ask us to carry our crosses, help us to be strong. Help us to accept the calling that you lay on our lives. Sometimes that way is full of joy, but sometimes also it takes suffering and strength. Father, give us all that is needful to follow you in this life. Amen. So here we are at the next station of the cross, Jesus falls the first time. We're going to find Jesus falls three times altogether in the stations of the cross, but here he is, he's collapsed under the weight of the cross. Sometimes uh, at Good Friday, I know we've had a Good Friday procession and I've loaded a large cross onto my back. It's been heavy, but it's never been heavy enough that I fell. But not for Jesus. He bore that cross. It was a heavy load. Uh, we know also he was already weakened because he'd gone through a night of being dragged through uh, the courts, dragged in front of Pilate. He'd been mocked, he'd been whipped, he'd been scourged. He'd, oh, you know, what he'd gone through. So it's hardly surprising that he was struggling at this point. Carrying our cross is not always an act of heroism. Sometimes it involves just sheer dogged determination and getting there. Sometimes it means we fall. Sometimes we stumble along the way. But Jesus got up and he carried on. Father, give us strength to carry on as you did. And when we stumble and fall in this life, to get up and to start again. In Jesus' name and for the love of him. Amen. And our next station, as Jesus goes on that road to the cross, is where Jesus meets his mother. We know that Jesus' mother and some other women were with Jesus at the time he died on the cross. And when his disciples abandoned him and left him, his mother and these women were with him. And this is the moment when Jesus has come out of his trial, out of his the mockery that he's had and has picked up the cross and there along the roadside is his mum waiting for him looking for her son and uh, Jesus comes and her mum his mum is you know upset you can see she's distressed and as any mother would be to see her son walking to execution and being mocked and hurt that way Heavenly Father, give us courage, like Mary, to continue to love your Son, Jesus, when he leads us in the path of suffering and pain. And Father, give us love like Jesus had for his mother. 
so that even in her distress, he was ready to comfort her. And so here's our fifth station, um, where Simon of Cyrene assists Jesus to carry his cross. You know, Jesus had stumbled, he'd met his mum, and here again, he's struggling, and he, the weight is just too much for him. You know, sometimes we go through those times, don't we, where things are just too hard for us to do alone. And it was the same for Jesus. And uh, perhaps the soldiers were also getting impatient and uh, saying, come on, you know, let's get this job done. And so they got this man, Simon of Cyrene, and got him to help Jesus to carry his cross so that he could actually get to the point of crucifixion. Sometimes in life, we are asked to help. Sometimes, like Simon, we are asked to help in the hard times. It's easy, isn't it, to look the other way or to say, well, it's not my business when uh, something painful or hurtful is happening. And I'm sure Simon heart broke as he carried the cross of this condemned man towards the place of execution. Father, give us courage to help. Give us courage to get involved in other people's suffering, to be there, perhaps not in a way that frees them or delivers them, but does just what we Here we are at the next station, which is uh, where Veronica offers Jesus a towel, or sometimes it's called a veil or a cloth. And uh, this story we don't find in the Bible, but uh, it's one that's part of the tradition for years. And uh, the story goes that uh, Jesus, uh, a lady saw him in the crowd, she took pity on him, and she came up to Jesus and she mopped his brow with a cloth just to give him a little bit of relief. And uh, when she did that, according to the uh, old stories, a print of Jesus' face was left on the cloth, 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 on the cloth which we sometimes call the veil of Veronica. And it was meant to be one of the early images of Jesus. It's interesting really because uh, we're not quite sure how strongly historical that story is because Veronica's name uh, actually comes from the Latin for vera, true icon, icon, a true icon or a true image. So her name means the true image, uh, just as the cloth was meant to bear the true image of Christ. And of course, um, earlier in Christian history, uh, this was a famous uh, relic that people sought to uh, find God's presence in looking at. And uh, unfortunately in history, once or twice, there were several copies of it said to be in existence. And so it's a bit hard to know which was the true, true image of Christ. But um, let's learn from the story anyway, because Jesus was suffering and in the story Veronica does a very very small thing you know sometimes we think what we do in our life doesn't make a difference sometimes we can feel like we're going to despair because our contribution can only be a drop in the ocean how can I change the injustice in the world? How can I feed the world's hungry? What can I do about climate change? But Veronica teaches us 
the, the small things matter. Heavenly Father, help us, like Veronica, to offer small mercies to those around us. Amen. And our seventh station has Jesus falling a second time. I get knocked down and I get up again and I get knocked down again. That's our experience in life, isn't it? That sometimes we get through that obstacle, we struggle past a tough point and then we find it again. Have you ever climbed a mountain and you have that wonderful thing of you see something that looks like the summit and you struggle to get up over it and you get over it and then you find, oh, now I can see the summit a bit further. And then you struggle on a bit further and you can see what you think's the summit again. It, it's like a little horizon and you crest the top of it and oh no, the whole mountain is lying in front of me again. That was it, Jesus' experience on the cross as he... Uh, fell yet again. And so, Heavenly Father, we pray that when we go through life's struggles, that you will give us perseverance to continue, that you will give us the strength not just to get up again once, but again and again and again. Amen. And here's the eighth station. Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. As Jesus carries his cross, he sees a group of women along the road and sees that they are sad. He stops to spend a moment with them to offer them some encouragement. And even though he's been abandoned by his friends and is in pain, he stops to try and help them. Sometimes we get so absorbed in ourselves and what we like that we forget about the needs of others and take them for granted and often ignore their needs. Heavenly Father, help us to think more about others. Help us to remember that others have problems too. Help us to respond to them even when we're busy or preoccupied with our own problems. Jesus, you comforted the pious women of Jerusalem who wept to see you bruised and torn. Comfort our souls with your tender pity, for in your pity we find trust. May our hearts be forever yours. Amen. And here we have the ninth station. Jesus falls the third time. A third time. Not just once, not just twice, but Jesus is stumbling yet again on the road to the cross. The weight is heavy. He is struggling. And here we can see in the picture the soldiers are getting even more impatient. Someone's actually tugging on the cord that's around his waist and if you like trying to drag him up. Heavenly Father, when we've taken too many of life's knocks, when we're battered not just once, twice, but a third and again and again and again, Heavenly Father, give us strength to carry on 
and resoluteness not to abandon our discipleship and our promise to follow you. Amen. In the tenth station, Jesus is stripped of his clothes. It's as if the soldiers realised that he had something of value, something they could benefit from. So they take off his robe and they cast lots to see who gets it, who's the one who's going to get uh, this item of value. Don't forget, back in those days, it was way before the time of mass-produced clothing. A piece of clothing was a precious item, something you kept for a lifetime. But for Jesus, it wasn't just the loss of something of value. It was the ultimate humiliation to have your clothing stripped off you. Heavenly Father, when we are stripped of those things that give us value, that protect our dignity, give us strength and courage in the inner life so we can continue strong as did your son Jesus Christ on the way of the cross. Amen. In the 11th station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. They're starting to get ready for the actual crucifixion itself. His hands have nails put through them. He's tied to the cross probably. Uh, we know he had the nails through his feet and his hands. This is where the pain starts to bite. This is where the hurt and the physical pain uh, is added to the humiliation and the previous pain. It's like pain upon pain upon pain. Heavenly Father, as we remember what you went through for us, how you offered your hands and your feet and your body for us, we offer our thanks and love and pray that you will give us strength to follow you with pure hearts. Amen. And in the twelfth station, we see here depicted Jesus dying on the cross. And he's surrounded by the women who stayed with him and the one disciple amongst the men, John. This is the crucifixion. This is the time when he gave his life for us. This is when he accepted what I write was our lot when he died in our place where he died for love of us where he died to win a victory for us when he gave himself out of love for you and love for me where he bore the weight of the sins of the world upon himself where he bore all the cruel injustices in the world on himself this is the crucifixion. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died, my richest gain I count but loss and pour content on all my pride. Amen.
and in the 13th station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. There, the few of his friends, and particularly the women who loved him, gather there and show perhaps great tenderness in how they deal with his body. Have you ever noticed how sometimes after a death or bereavement people's best side shines forward? People who've been critical in life learn to praise the person who's died. Or people who have been harsh and fighting their own corner suddenly discover again what it means to be tender and loving and compassionate. Heavenly Father, sometimes in the midst of suffering and darkness we see the silver lining of goodness and mercy and love. Help us, Lord, to embrace that and to see and to encourage those signs of your love and your presence amongst us. Amen. And now the 14th station. Jesus is laid in the tomb. It wasn't even his own tomb. It was a borrowed tomb. I suppose really it was a given tomb. It was passed on to him. But as we know, he didn't stay there so it was only borrowed for a while but I wonder how it felt for his friends to see him laying there all the hopes all the plans all the aspirations for a better future laid on a stone slab All the love that was shared, the memory of the healings, the memory of the teaching, the one who taught like no other, all laid in a grave. The ultimate emptiness, despair and pain. Heavenly Father, give us hope at the times when it seems all is lost. When it seems like all the cards have been played and yet there's no victory. Give us grace to believe and to wait for the Easter dawn. And hope that in the end you are victorious. Amen.
When we walk as Stations of the Cross, we're effectively walking the Via Dolorosa, the way of sorrows that Jesus walked on his way to the cross. And here in the entrance and exit to this uh, garden or display of the Stations of the Cross, there is a, an additional uh, carving. And uh, this one is interesting because uh, if I can read the Latin to you from my very rusty Latin, the words say something like, um, his mother stood uh, in sorrow at the cross where her son was hanging, weeping. And underneath it has the words, does anyone have sorrow like my sorrow? And if you look at the carving, it's interesting too, because here in this little um, disc, we see the clothes that were torn uh, off Jesus, uh, sorry, not torn, uh, the dice that were cast as lots. We see the implements of crucifixion, uh, pliers and a hammer for the nails, and we see the coins for which Jesus was sold. And uh, also on the other side, we see the whips and the scourges which were used in torturing Jesus. Did e'er such love and sorrow meet, or thorns compose so rich a crown? Were the whole realm of nature mine? that were an offering far too small. Love so amazing, so divine, demands my love, my life, my all.